today? Yeah, today I'm I'm doing good, and uh, yeah, today is Wednesday. No, most American teams, not all. We go Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday practice, um, and tomorrow actually there's like a small tournament. Uh, okay. Just because there's no tournaments, we're doing like a small tournament with referees, uh, just for teams to get a chance to play. So we're kind of resting up for that also. So I did the gym this morning then i i went to the park with my daughter and then i go coaching after this so ah, busy okay. day. this was also uh, last week you told me so you also uh, yeah. coach coach some other teams or some uh kids or no i'm co i'm started doing uh indoor lessons um ah. yeah it's nice i it, like individual lessons with uh with younger kids who are playing indoor and uh i mean because <laughs> I mean, it was already difficult for FIVB because they decreased the prize money and everything a lot. But uh, but now with the pandemic, it's okay, it's not yeah. possible. It's not possible to just play volleyball and have a family. So yeah. <laughs> so now I have to coach and make some money. And <laughs> yeah, but this is so, good. For, so it's nice for that. Yeah, a good thing that there is uh, the possibility to to uh, educate some some kids and then also be back in the gym for indoor volleyball, right? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, it's nice. It's yeah, so let's it start. took a while for the memories. Yeah, I yeah. want to take on this on the end, but when we are just uh, starting with indoor volleyball, uh, one, one question at the start because uh, before you play beach volleyball, I don't know if everyone who's listening uh, already know that you have been a professional indoor volleyball player, right? And you almost yes. played here in Germany and at Unterhaching when the club was. Yeah famous out there for one month yeah <laughs> <laughs> but um uh it would uh how many years do you play in the professional overseas uh i played four professional and that would have been my fifth ah, okay. uh, and, and then yeah that's when i stopped so i played two years in greece and that's where i met my wife and then uh i played two years in italy after that ah, okay yeah and then someone detected Heart problems, right? We already talked about this. Yeah, yeah. Don't need to yeah, go deep yeah. in it, but this made you stop of indoor volleyball, and uh, luckily, you it's not such critical that you can start professional beach volleyball, right? Yeah. Well, it's it's more. I, I didn't think I could play any volleyball, um, but then I I saw you know many doctors. And they said, so now I check up every year. I have to check and make sure everything's okay with like an MRI. But uh, basically they said, oh, you, like you can keep playing. But uh, but after that, and I cut the contract and everybody knew I, it was hard to get a, a good contract. I had to start again at the bottom. So it was a good opportunity and I changed to the beach. It, you teamed up with, with Kane Schalk, who is now able to... Uh, play for uh, USA volleyball after he changed his citizenship uh, yep. from Canada, where he attended at the Olympic Games and the World Tour, uh, to play for uh, USA volleyball, and that's why he also uh, needed a new new partner for the future. But how do you found together, and uh, was there already the idea to maybe play also? last year's avp tournament it was, well i guess we had been talking for a long time uh even before he became a usa player about you know oh like okay. uh, obviously it was like informal back then but we always sort of talked about playing um but then when he became legal to play that was uh that was after 2019 so i, I had kind of a, a difficult year with a I played with Pretty, and I had some injuries for a lot of the year. Um, so basically, we talked a little bit, but he decided to play with Chase, um, which I was like, oh, okay, I understand. Um, and then the pandemic happened. We ended up playing these tournaments in Long Beach, um, and he played with Chase. I played with Casey Patterson, who was nice enough to pick me up and to the main draw and everything, uh, and we had a lot of fun. Um, But yeah, it felt really good. Uh, I think during the pandemic, I found a good way to kind of take care of myself. Um, and so I felt great. I, I feel like I played at a, at a high level. 
and then uh yeah we kind of talked after so i think we've always gotten along very well and we have we have young children where we both played a good amount of beach volleyball so i think it's a it's a nice fit uh in terms of like maturity we both really want to go uh for 2024 in paris and i think we'll be a really good team and we're, we're a nice natural fit so okay yeah that's uh sounds good and also answer my uh Uh, other question regarding the goals so the general goal is to to be together and try to get to the next olympic uh, quarter yes. right and the first real uh important game have been the directly the country quarter for the doha fiwb uh event against try and trevor and try and trevor uh, needed this win a little bit or needed this to to keep their points or the possibility for qualify uh, to qualify for the Tokyo games uh, but you won so explain us a little bit the situation this time the first real real match and it was a street setter right and then you made it yeah so <laughs> yeah i mean they they're in a difficult position because They were the second team in the U.S. in terms of Olympic points and, and the top 16, so they're in a good position. But uh, they had a bad ending to last to 2019, so they were in a position where they're not. They don't have enough points for the main draw. So that, of course, uh, in a country like the U.S., that puts you into the country quota. So instead of being straight into the main draw like you would expect. They were just out and uh, had to play somebody. And unfortunately for them, it wasn't like a newer team. It was like a few experienced players, like, like me and uh, me and Came. So, so uh, yeah. So, so we were able to win that game. But then, unfortunately, <laughs> we went to Doha and had a horrible game against a Spanish team that played really well. But yeah, that was a very a very painful. It would have been better if we lost and just kept my points. <laughs> so. Yeah, you done the whole travel and 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 lost in the qualification, right? So yeah, how hard is it to, especially in these times, to to travel all this? And maybe you had some practice, maybe uh, at in Doha. So, but not making them. How hard was it? Yeah. Oh, very very hard. And <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's. It was definitely one of the worst. I've played a lot of country quotas and a lot of qualifiers. Um, I think maybe I've lost in one or two other qualifiers out of like a lot. Um, so not only was it rare for me to lose, but like to lose in that way, the first round, um, we haven't played an international tournament in over a year. Um, and then it was with the COVID, so we had to get there extra early. And after we lost, we had to stay even longer <laughs> before we could leave. Um, so it was just brutal. But uh, I'm, I think it's going to end up making us a better team. And uh, we weren't feeling that. We felt good going into the tournament. But uh, I think now, every week, we're getting better and better as a team. And right now, we feel even better and more confident. And I think at a certain point, I think we'll start to get the results we want. Um, When it's early, it's a little difficult, so it was super hard, and we didn't expect that at all. But uh, we still have like a long-term perspective and think we're going to be really good. And so we're just we just took it, took all the lessons we could take from the loss, and uh, move forward. And we're ready to play in Cancun now. But uh, did you uh, had at least the time to to practice with international teams because you have to stay a little bit after? You have been elim uh, eliminated. Yeah, we uh, we stayed and we had some trainings. <laughs> I think one of the teams we trained with uh, tested positive for COVID, like right after our ah. practice. But uh, but luckily we were outdoors. The Swiss team, and... right? No, uh, ah. the Italian Italians. Ah, ah okay. Um, yeah. Another qualification team, but. Uh, ah, okay. okay. But now we, we have pretty good training. There's like a USA training group. So we, we train with Trevor and Try, yeah. um, Jake and Taylor sometimes. So so we have some good training. But yes, there's no substitute for like an international match. So and due to it the was COVID, good at least. Yeah, and due to the COVID thing, because I also know it because 
uh, I have been during this time also uh, in LA. Normally, there are when there is no pandemic, there are a few international teams for preseason practice also at Hamosa, right? And and hunting. Yeah. So yeah, like uh, the Canadians come and yeah. yeah, different teams come sometimes. Yeah. So now obviously there's nobody. So. <laughs> Okay, um, uh, to to uh, end up with the Doha or to to close this topic with the Doha event, tell us a little bit um, about the situation with this whole uh, COVID bubble and you have and and the uh, how was it between the games? I think you you need to come in early, get tested every day, and uh, need to quarantine. How yeah, so we had to get a test before we flew. And then we got tested when we landed. And then we had to quarantine in the hotel room for about 24 hours until we got our test results. And then we got tested every two or three days after that. Um, so it was good. I mean, obviously, some people tested positive. It's it's not so easy to make a, a super impenetrable bubble now without yeah. billions of dollars so like the nba could do it because they had yeah. so much so much money but i mean the fivb they're, they're doing their best and uh but yeah i think you have to still be safe like i think many people maybe had their guard down and uh weren't wearing masks like all the time as much as they okay. could but i i was super careful yeah because i know and even in cancun they there's a good chance that some players will get it or will come with it and it won't test positive. So I think everybody has to be careful and, and protect themselves also. But, uh, but yeah, it's, I think on the whole, it's been a good, a good thing. And I'm happy that the FIVB has been able to do it. Yeah. I think there is at least uh, a little bit of possibility to, to get some money and also get, get points for the teams who already need it for the Olympic yeah. qualification, but for sure it's, the risk is there, but yeah, it's like on every other job, maybe. But yeah, so um, you already uh, announced it. So the FIVB announced, uh, I think, the the calendar for for this year and the next one is the Cancun Mexico event, and there are three events in a row, back to back. So um, what what's the plan for this? I heard that will, uh, there will be a country quota for USA again in in LA but will there is this for the first tournament and then second you need to fly home or back or is it one for everything so the, all three country quotas there's going to be three and they're all in Mexico ah, okay. so <laughs> but, so okay that means so we're going to go yeah. and we're going to stay for the three tournaments no matter what um, ah, okay hopefully hopefully we win all three we play three tournaments um, if we don't win all three, we're going to stay there and, and practice and take it like a training uh, camp. Ah, okay. So, because I think it's, maybe they let a few people leave, like if you have a good uh, excuse, but, but mostly you're not supposed to leave once you're there. So, uh, ah, okay. so our plan is to stay until the end. So. Ah, okay. But then the country quota will be uh, when you all arrived and out of the bubble, <laughs> You play the country quarter, and then uh, the the team who not make it through the country quarter have the chance to play a one week later again, right? To get uh, qualified. Yeah, yeah, or even like six days. I think the tournament is spaced out by like six days yeah, okay. instead of. Six. But uh, but yeah, okay. and that also makes it if <laughs> if you win the country quarter, qualify, and have a good tournament. It seems like you have to play maybe the next day for the country quota. So, ah, okay. So it could be. So hopefully we play and we have no days off. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay. So yeah, fingers fingers crossed that the main draw um, is the yeah. goal. So, um, but uh, in terms of points, uh, the points uh, of of came are they deleted or doing this uh, two years of of ban? Due to the uh, country switch, yeah, or what it yeah, means? they were totally deleted. So uh, ah, okay, he was able in 2019 to play two events, um, a couple Norsecas. So uh, the maximum you can get is 100. So he doesn't have so many points. Um, so I have like okay points for for the qualification, uh, 
but we're close. I mean, we we have to get in and get some results because if we have more results like we had in uh, Doha, then we won't have enough points to play. So, <laughs> so it's stressful for sure. In the country code is it against again, try and Trevor? Uh, I think as of now. So I think if if other teams drop out, maybe four or five other teams, they could get into the main draw, and then we wouldn't play them. But as of now, I think the first tournament and the third tournament we play them. The second tournament, uh, Casey Patterson and Chase um, Budinger are not going. Okay. So that means that we will play uh, Bill and Miles, Bill Kalinske and Miles Evans probably. Okay. Um, I think they're going to all three. I'm not sure, uh, or somebody else. Uh, maybe Billy Allen and uh, yeah. um, Andy Benish. So yeah, you've played so long now at the World Tour um, and have been on so many events. Is there a, maybe a different uh, to be on at the same tournament at another year because you've been there with a different partner? So is it? Maybe you you gone to an event and uh, one year it was uh, was was different to other year where you have been there with a other partner. Uh, I don't know. I mean, or do you uh, focus on you and the nice environment in Stad or something? Yeah, I mean the environment. Yeah, and and that's uh, that's definitely the tournament. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> After Cancun, there's like two or three other yeah. tournaments that are four stars there's like one two star at the same time as the four star and then stad yeah so stad is like on my list and i'm yeah. we're super fired up and really want to you know have be in a good situation to be in the tournament yeah. um and even with no even if there's no fans uh hopefully there's something but uh yeah. even with no fans i'll be very happy to yeah. be in stad so yeah so you also this is one of your favorite tournaments right Oh yeah, definitely. And I still haven't had a good, great tournament there. I think I've had like a ninth, a seventeenth, and a twenty-fifth. And then last year, actually, we lost in the country quota in a close game. Yeah. Um, but uh, I still really want to have a good tournament there uh, and bring my family. Also, I think would be really fun yeah. to Switzerland. Yeah, let's keep fingers crossed. I also look forward to this. I think this will be the only tournament where it could be possible. Uh, to be there and i think they we will have a special uh in the next weeks uh, regarding uh or uh, for for regarding start um i think they have three options with um, as much as possible fans uh not so many fans and no fans but yeah, yeah i think uh we will need to see how how all the uh pandemic goes but yeah yeah during the tournament and when you have no no practice and no games so how do you spend time between between tournaments or between um at an event uh, be, between between games uh, you know, challenges it depends i like i think i typically do better and feel better if i go do things <laughs> outside so yeah. nothing uh nothing strenuous but for sure walking around and in, in stad on your free time is very nice and like yeah <clears throat> and you can do it instead of like riding on a bike in the gym yeah. just go for a walk outside and, yeah. and it's very nice and i think it it's it's good to not think so much if you just sit in the hotel and think just about your matches i think it's maybe not so good but if you go out and hang out with your your teammate and do other things and take your mind off i think it's good for for staying relaxed okay and so in general you enjoy the the traveling the the sport and your job brings or even if it is it some i think i i think sometimes it's it's uh not the the greatest thing to be on the plane and have the jet lag but in general is this one thing you you enjoy to to be on the international road yeah yeah and yeah i think places. I enjoy it. Um, yeah, it's it just depends it's, if you have a long season, which uh, hopefully we will have in the future again. But uh, <laughs> I mean, then it can get to be difficult. And if you're if you're going to 
Brazil and then China after it's like at some point you just don't feel good. But uh, especially coming from America, it's much more difficult playing from America and Brazil because you have to fly to Europe all the time. And there's there's almost no tournaments anymore in America, unfortunately. But uh, no, I like it. I like it very much, but it can get old for sure. Okay. During the last years, you you played with uh, different partners and a few more than when other people. So in general, do you think uh, to play with many partners during the years uh, instead of one or two like uh, other teams made you in the end uh, a better player to be more flexible in terms of finding other partners or uh, to to uh, be able to handle some situations because you played with different styles of partners? Or partners with different yeah, styles, I mean, that I would have preferred to uh, stay with <laughs> one partner longer, but uh, it just didn't really work out that way for many reasons. Sometimes because I didn't want or sometimes because they didn't. Sometimes we both didn't want to keep playing. But, uh, but I think I learned a lot, maybe, yeah, more about myself over the years. And, like, you can see the consistent issues that can cause for somebody else when you play with so many people um, and learn from that if, if you're smart. But, uh, but, yeah, but now my plan is to stay with Kame, play to 24, 2024, do really well. And then be done. So, <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, but that's that's a good goal. But yeah, yeah, and, and it's only three years when everything goes goes right instead yeah. of yeah, yeah. Uh, four years of preparation. But um, yeah, yeah, I think that we we now see that the whole Olympic qualification is a is a long journey, and you need to at least or or you need to be prepared in every tournament. So. In the end, yes. Even, uh, especially when you're a U.S. team, one or two points can 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 make you uh, to the Olympics, going to the Olympics, or uh, to be the third or fourth uh, team, which is not allowed to go there. Regarding partners, uh, I need to ask you about one partner. I think your first big or real partner. Uh, where you also get po the possibility to to fly overseas and play was Todd Rogers, who yes. Uh, yes. asked you or or I called you uh, after your indoor indoor career uh, was over to play. So how was the situation back in the times when when he called? I think we had when I was uh, uh, at your practice a few years ago. I think we already talked about this. There have yeah. been yeah. He, he he know you from from an indoor team or can you explain how how well, the situation was? Okay, well, so he didn't end up. It was so I knew I knew Todd pretty well because he coached me for two years at Santa Barbara um, when I was an indoor player. He was the assistant coach, um, so I knew him from that. But my first year, I actually played with Nick Lucena. We did mostly AVPs, but we also did some North Jacobs. And then I ended up, I wanted to play with Nick again, but he ended up choosing to play with uh, Ryan Doherty because he had more points than me. I ended up in a situation where I didn't have Nick anymore when I thought I was playing with him. Um, and I'd already told Todd that I was going to stay with Nick, but then I called up Todd and said, oh, I'm not playing with Nick anymore. Do you want to play? Um, so it's kind of like that. It, it wasn't like I didn't get a call out of the blue and said, "Yeah, let's play." Like it worked out that way. But he was like, it was between Nick and Todd for me anyway. So and I was happy with both. So I was very happy to play with them. And um, and you got the uh, opportunity to to play there overseas. And I think it's it's it was also a good opportunity to to have an experienced partner there to to not care about uh, other things in terms of organization of, of, of the turn or during a tournament just to be able to be to focus on your your strengths, yeah. right? Yeah, he was definitely and professional and do exactly, exactly everything, we, everything we had to do when we were there. So yeah. So yeah, it was, it was very nice. Yeah, yeah I, I visited him. I think he's still the head coach of the uh, NCAA team of 
Cal Poly, right? Yeah, Cal, Cal Poly, yeah. Yeah, it seems like he's doing really well. We Once in a while, we uh, we text with each other. Um, yeah, he also... So, yeah, and he's a, he's a good... He's always uh, rooting for my success, and, and me too for him in college, so we're, we still get along very well. Yeah, and yeah, I think he follows, yeah. And if every... Uh, if and, and he always uh, asks if, if, if there are some... Uh, female young players, which maybe can can yeah. come yeah, yeah. Uh, to, to, to join. Uh, so yeah. if <laughs> someone is listening and uh, is a good B twelve bad player, message us. We can link it. But maybe you know, maybe your daughter later in the future. Yeah, she's she's going to be, she's gonna be a good athlete, very and she's very long. Very tall, she's very tall. So. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> So then it all come together again when there is no beach volleyball. So uh, how is your day also do during the pandemic? I think the situation in LA is a little bit um, free more or a little more free than compared to to here in Germany because you got the vaccine running, I think. But in general, yeah, I think you can't do any uh, all the things like uh, two years before. So how's your day so practice then care about your your daughter and your family or uh, yeah a lot a lot of family time and a lot of the pandemic was definitely the the year of like going to the park two day two times per day for like two to four hours like, like <laughs> okay. that's that's all we could do for the whole time and uh so it was really nice to spend that much time with my daughter um but uh, but I'm excited to put her in some sort of school next year. <laughs> so, yeah. But uh, but yeah, I mean that's pretty much what I do. Like, cause we didn't have anybody. We don't have any family to watch her, so it's just up to us. And yeah. and it wasn't a time for a nanny or preschool really. So so we I just spend a lot of when I'm not doing volleyball stuff, then we're just spending time with our yeah. daughter. So yeah, we I think last year at this time we. Uh, I talked with with Nick uh, also, and he also said the thing which really uh, also explained uh, for uh, the situation for many people. It's it feels like the day, the same day again and again because you're doing yeah. Yeah. this for sure. part. Yeah. And in terms of of sports, we know uh, some other or many of of players doing their free times times also some other sports. I think uh, Jake Gibb is nearly a golf professional. So, uh, do you also have a, a sport, a second sports where you ne uh, you nearly a, a pro, pro in? I like all sports. I played a lot of soccer growing up. Uh, I'll play tennis now and then. I love shooting baskets, but uh, I mean, <laughs> probably I, I can't play much now with a kid and another kid on the way. But uh, but video games probably if I could <laughs> go back in time, I would be a pro uh, gamer. Okay. Or if, yeah, this is, <laughs> if I could be young now, uh, I was always very good at those. Okay. I think um, I uh, got answered all my question like always when when. Uh, I have some questions from you, so I appreciate it really. Um, and uh, so, an, another baby is is on the way. I I heard. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. In uh, <laughs> bad timing, uh, May thirtieth, my wife is due. So oh, okay. there's a couple turns around then. Yeah. So we'll see what happens. So yeah, but congrats to you to your wife. And, yeah, yeah, thank you, thank you very much. I hope we maybe see us on in start. I already bought a microphone with long distance uh, yeah. tripod <laughs> post, so <laughs> there is no reason Go why you me. not uh, uh, be at the mix zone and need to talk. Okay, Theo, then yeah. appreciate it and thanks for your time. Enjoy the rest of the day. And um, yeah, we keep in touch. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Thanks, Dale. Have a good one. Uh, Shad. Yeah.